Spicer and you're watching Boot Sale Challenge, the show where our contestants have to find the gems amongst the junk. Now they have just 90 minutes and £100 to get out into the boot sale and find the best buys. Well today it's an early start here at Romford in Essex. This boot sale takes place at Warren Farm. Locally, the field is known as the Bonzer's Potato Site because it used to be a busy vegetable farm, but it's now packed every Thursday with around 400 boot sale stalls. Well, it wouldn't be a competition without people to judge it, and our experts in antiques and collectibles are very used to spotting a star buy. The charming Mark Oliver is a keen collector of Dalton Lambeth wear. He's a trained auctioneer and his main areas of expertise are British art pottery, art nouveau and art deco. Paul Hetchin has a passion for pop memorabilia. He once sold a poster signed by all the original Sex Pistols, including Sid Vicious, for around £700. Now I've sent our experts out into the field to see what they can find. The sort of thing our team should be looking for. Well, here's a nice item of rock and pop memorabilia, relating, of course, to George Harrison, one of the Beatles, but sadly no longer with us. It's a box set relating to one of his last singles, When We Was Fab. What I liked about this, if we open it up, is that you actually get a little cutout of George in his Sergeant Pepper outfit, which many will remember from 1967 when that album was released. And then below it, if I can just move that out the way, there is the single itself. Now, it's only priced at £6, which I think is a good price. I'd probably want to put at least another £6 on top of that. So I hope the contestants spot it. It'd be nice to see it at the end of the show. As a general rule of thumb, singles are not very valuable. I mean, there are, of course, exceptions to the rule. Some can be worth a great deal of money. The majority are worth 10, 20, 30 pence. Beatles are more popular. This set, however, is a later set, a, a commemorative set from the late 70s into the early 80s. It's complete. There's 20 of the Beatles' greatest records here. The condition of the records is perfect. The condition of the box here is a bit tatty, and that's going to make some difference to its value. It's on sale here today at £20. If they can beat them down, perhaps if the teams find it and get it down to £15 or so, I think there's still a profit left. But it's a nice item. We don't actually see too many of them. Well, I've got the money, but not for much longer, because it's time to meet the teams. And on our blue team today, we've got Alan and Graham. Hi. Hi. Good morning, How all. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. Yes, you look very healthy. Obviously, you've been out and about to boot sales a lot. I'm just a sun lover, long night. Uh, I love the boot sale and I love the outdoor life. Now, I hear you've done very well when you've sold at boot sales beforehand. That is correct, yes. What's the largest amount you've taken off one person? The largest amount is probably about £200. Wow, that's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. Do you enjoy them? I do. I love boots. But sales. which do you enjoy most, selling or buying? Um, definitely selling. Really? Yes. Right, I was going to say I should be buying because you're spending somebody else's money here. <laughs> You've got £100, you know the rules. Who's having the money out of you two? Alan has Right, one. there you go then. OK. And on our yellow team, we have Jamie and Jennifer. Hello. Hello. Now, I understand you've been doing boot sales but with a special mission in mind. Do you want to pay for holiday? Yeah. Yeah, we're aiming to pay for our uh, flights in January to Vegas. Wow, very nice. And then lose everything else that you make while Absolutely. you're there. Exactly. Absolutely. Or make it, of course. If you make it, do let us know. Come back and then you can start paying the £100 to the contestants. Who's doing the money out of you two? Right, OK, there you go. OK, well, you know the rules. All right. And we do stick to them. You must spend your £100 down to the last penny. And you have 90 minutes to do it in, starting from now. This is all I get I like boot sales because you just get to rummage around in everybody else's stuff and uh, there's always a chance you can find the bargain for 50 pence. I think probably Jamie has a better eye for a bargain than I do. I think I have a tendency just to go for something because I like it. Whether it's actually got any value itself is, is another question entirely. Possibly chalk or something like that. Because when I first opened, I thought I was a salt and pepper shake. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why there was a brush. It's just a fantastic concept because everybody brings their stuff to one place and you go there, as opposed to yard sales and garage sales in the States where you have to go from one house to another house to another house. So it's, it's fantastic. You're never quite sure what's, uh, what's out there. 
Um, I like to rummage through boxes in the uh, hope of finding that hidden treasure. Sometimes you find that bargain, you can resell again and make a little bit of profit. So what's the fibre to me? Is this any good to you, mate? I would say I've got the best eye for a bargain um, because I like to haggle. I'll tell you what, seven quid we've got a deal. All right, seven yeah. down, pay them out. And I think I get uh, the, the best possible price that I can. Brilliant, thank you very much. Well, today's gems are all about nursery wear. Mark, we're starting with two tiles here, which are really at the top of the nursery wear market, really. Um, these are by Charles Voisey, who, of course, was best known, wasn't he, for the arts and crafts movement? Very much one of the leading lights of the arts and crafts movement, Paul. But with, there we'd be looking at sort of 1880s. These are a, a lot more recent These than that, are aren't they? made, uh, designed about five years before he died. Yes. Uh, from around 1935. They're made for Minton, and, of course, they're from the Alice in Wonderland series. Aren't they lovely images? I really like they're them. They're great images. And I um, love the condition. Condition is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we've spoken about tiles in the past. Yeah. But these really are in A1 condition, aren't they? It's just. very, very important. And it's unusual, Paul, not to see any crazing yep, even. Yeah, they're absolutely fresh. Yep. And, uh, and you can see examples of the full set, actually, in the Victorian Albert yes, Museum. Yes, you can, yes. But alas, we've only got two of these today. Now, value-wise, uh, they're highly rated because, of course, you've got two markets, tile market and that very strong <laughs> Alice, Alice in Wonderland, so Wonderland market. So what sort of money are we talking, about? I think Mr. you're H? looking retail conservatively about 250 275 Ooh, per tile. Yes, per tile. Excuse me, how much is this, please? 25. 25. Now it's a reproduction, but I'm thinking it's a great value. It's got a chip on the spout. Yeah. I, I swear that's going to be on the worst buy table, but I just think it's <laughs> nice to have it. What I'm looking for is bits of artwork, I think, that um, will probably make like us uh, a little bit of money. How much is it? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But something old and interesting, I think, uh, we're looking for. What you got in your pictures, mate, please? Uh, 15 on the small one, and 30 on the large one. Give me 20 pounds. 26. What's the best you can do on that? It's quite not good job, it's insane. Would you take eight? Or about nine, I'm going to meet in the middle. 22. That's it, yeah, 22, come on. What's he haggling over here? It's an actual man. 25, so. Oh, he yeah. wants 40 for them, I think that's a... 25. No, for the three. 23. 24. Done. <laughs> I think this is absolutely charming. I really like the image of the lady. These actual photographs on their own. Um, at antique fairs now do command very good prices, particularly if it's a nice image. I mean, yeah. the ideal image you really want is children playing with a toy, but she's very, very nice. And this, is this just sort of a monogram? Or yeah, a... I mean, that, yes, it's difficult to make that out, isn't it? I mean, it is possible at one time that it might have had silver yeah. indentation, but it looks to me, as you say, more like a monogram of some description. How much is it, Janessa? Um, I think you said 40? 40 pounds. Yeah. It's quite a bit of a budget, yeah. yeah. But it's a nice. Well, that's a genuine antique, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's just see what other bargains we can find. Yeah, have a look there. Back with more nursery wear, and Mr. H. Ted is playing cricket. I see. Very observant. They are from the 1930s, or it is from the 1930s. Aww. Now, I don't think cricket collectors are going to be terribly excited by this. You know, I there's a tendency so. to say, oh, I would appeal to two markets. Right. I think this is specifically for the nursery plate, nursery bowl collectors right. and teddy bear collectors. In good condition, I would have thought around £80, but it's not in good condition, It's is not. It? A few little scratches, a little chip there. So we're going to say nearer to 30 35 that yeah. sort of value? Yeah, that's about Fine. Right. Nice little piece here from a larger tea set, though. It's transfer printed, probably dating from around about the 1950s. And as you're going around the boot sales, the antique fairs, you might spot little pieces like this. 
which are only priced at about £10. But some of those American tourists, Paul, they really do like these and they will pay decent money for them, so keep your eyes peeled. Do you remember the pop group Madness? Well, in their heyday, of course, everyone was stomping around doing the silly dances that accompanied their songs. But they were very well known for wearing DMs, Dr. Martin boots. Now, in 1999, the company launched a limited edition of these. And you can just see the little insignia there saying Madness. With the boots came a book. Now, if you've got the boots, the book and the box, it could be worth some money. Find out how much after the break. Doors. Lucinda Lambton is in Sublime Suburbia, Thursday at 7.30 on ITV1. Ever wondered how the streets on the Monopoly board were chosen? The old Ken Road was cheap and cheerful and equally proud of both. And what they're like these days. South East London and the old Kent Road, where you get the real true Londoners from. Tim Moore presents a brand new series, Do Not Pass Go, Friday at 8, ITV1. Living the high life. Or slumming it. I'm doing my best, but it doesn't look good. Geordie singer Leanne gets to taste the riches. No, I'm not trying to you. While the polo raw sees how the other half live. She's going to hit me and me. New Poor Little Rich Girls, Wednesday at 9, ITV1. Welcome back. Well, in 1999, Dr. Martins launched these special edition boots, which bore the pop group Madness's insignia. Now, they cost at the time £60 and came complete with this book, all about the history of the company. Now, if you've got a pair like these that have never been worn, are completing their box and have the book, how much are they worth? We'll try £120 to £150. Oh, a spot of bronze over there. Let's have a close look at that. Uh, bronze, yeah. That looks quite interesting. Yeah. I'll take that for 30 pence, please. For 30, 30 pence. I, I don't think we'll you. I know you're going through a lot of haggling today, but you're a bit pushing time now because you've only got 15 minutes, and that's non-negotiable. Okay, so you need all. to whip round yeah, so and spend right, the rest pretty, of your yeah, money. Pretty quick, haven't Absolutely. Pretty quick. Right, Good let's luck. Let's get to it then. I like it. I like it. I think it's nice. Well, you can have a deal at three. Thank you very much. Oh, this is what I like, pictures. It's a print. Yeah, it's, um, you don't know. Can we do... Yeah, come on, drop it. What's the lowest on that you take? Oh. I think that's a bit too much. I mean, it's worth a couple of quid to me. So... Okay, thank you. Very good. So you like this? I think I'd like that for a pound, please. Okay, yeah. No beating around the bush. Any hidden Rembrandts or uh, Renoirs in that lot? Oh, no, no, you think you won't be yeah. Let's have a quick look, see what you got. What about the bike? No, I think we'll get the bike and miss if you don't mind. No, it's all, uh, it's all too modern for me, I'm afraid. Hello. 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 How much have you got left now? Uh, 18, 18, no, £18, £18, £18. £18. £18.20. £18.20. How much for the two Toby jugs? Four quid. Four quid. Give you three. What do you want for these? £35 pounds for the lot. Ooh. Yes. Good to do it for £18.20. Because you smiled at me, I'll let you have it. I tell you what, if there's not a profit in that, I'm going to make Paul Hetch and eat his hat. <laughs> of time the 90 minutes is over both teams believe they bought the best buys what do our judges think we'll find out in a minute first of all let's find out what the teams are playing for the beautiful town of Arundel in West Sussex will be the location for the final program of the series that's where our two high scoring teams will be playing for these limited edition Sally Tuffin vases these have been especially made for Boot Sale Challenge and are worth more than £1,000 each. Well, the sun might have gone in, but the yellow team is still shining. Will the judges shine down with their valuations? Well, I doubt it, but we'll find out. <laughs> well, we shall soon see. Did you have a bit of fun out there, you two? We did, definitely. You did, and you've found a variety of objects, Mr H, starting with some rather marvellous glass panels. And these are rather good, aren't they? Because what I liked about these are these lovely shapes that are formed here. I mean... To be honest, I think they're a bit of an oddity in a way, in that you've got some that are one shape and others which suggest that there were larger panels to go round them. So one would imagine they came out of a domestic 
dwelling circa about 1910, 1920, yeah. Paul, do we think? Yeah. a house to us. <coughs> a domestic <laughs> dwelling is a house, yes, yes, that's right. And I think probably about that period, don't you, Paul? I would say so. I mean, they, they show some signs of sort of the arts and craft movement, but not enough to make them especially desirable to that kind of market. No. But even so, they're quite attractive, aren't they? They're attractive, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six panels, which is quite a decent amount. What are we thinking here, Paul? Around about 22, 25 pounds? 25, I 25. Think. Yep. What did you pay, folks? We paid 18 pounds 20. At 18 pounds <laughs> 20. And what? guess what? That was all they had left. Ah, oh, oh, that's your close. last 20p. Yeah, exactly. Well, you've made some money to start, so well done on those. And over to a nice little bit of quality there, Paul. I think this is lovely, this yeah. little picture frame here. I mean, look at the detail oh, on that. It's nice, really it? nice. That it's, is. A, it's a quality item, yes. and and indeed an early item too. I mean, yeah, I, I would this. think yes. Yeah, I would think it dates from perhaps mid nineteenth mid, century. Yes, that mid kind Victorian of time. period. It's a sort of hand tinted photographic image from that era, isn't it? That's right. It is, and I like it. Kind of yeah. thing I'd have liked to have bought. I mean, oh, how, yeah, how much? Yeah. How much did you pay for it? That one was thirty-five. Oh, 35. a fair amount of your budget then. But it's a quality item, it's isn't it, It's a quality Mr. item. I think we can give you a... You more or less paid the right price, but it's nice to be able to buy a good antique. That yes, boots out. isn't it just? I'm going to give you a small profit. Go as on. recognition of buying such a nice object, I can give you a massive profit of £2. <laughs> £37. Pounds. Oh, oh, Mr. Generous Twice yes, <laughs> again. No, no, no. Let's go on to something down in front, which again we rather liked because of the imagery here. Mm. The fishing imagery, again, any sort of hobbies like fishing and tennis and sporting hobbies, very, very popular with collectors. And what also is popular, if we turn it over, is that name, another quality name, yeah. Royal Worcester. So it's a nice piece of bone china. Sad thing is, Mr H, we're missing the old cup, so we can't have our morning cupper, can we? No, and when all's said and done, a cup, a saucer without its cup is oh. not that desirable. No. But it's got lots of other things going on. Yeah. Had it have had the cup, we would have rated it quite highly, but without it, I'm afraid we're looking at sort of four pounds. I think we're being generous at four. Yeah, probably what did you pay for that? One pound. One pound, yeah. Well, we've made you another three pounds, and we're going to finish off, if we may, with this piece, which is, if we look at the maker's mark there, a bit of Burgess and Lee. And again, Mr H, nice name, isn't it? It's a well-known name. name. It's also got Burley wear on it. And yes. Charlotte Reed, the very well-known uh, woman potter, she did a lot of stuff for Burgess and Lee, but this isn't one of them. This, though, would probably have been produced somewhere in the 1920s or 30s, I would have thought, and it's probably for mint sauce. What took your eye here? Why did you buy a little piece like this? The design of the, the jug and the, the saucer as well, the egg Yeah, leaf. you just took a shine to the overall what design did you pay of for it. it. Think a fiver. What's Five it pounds. Not a lot more than that, really, is it? No, but once again, showing signs of our great generosity, we're going to elevate the value of this to <laughs> six pounds. <laughs> All I can say is, don't expect to be asked around for Sunday lunch. <laughs> <laughs> The yellow team also bought a set of scales for £3. The judges valued them at £4. A ceramic vase lost them a pound, coming in at £2. And despite being Wedgwood, a half-moon dish from the Ritz Hotel lost them £3. Well, the experts simply shone on our yellow team, but will they leave the blue team out in the cold? Let's find out. Oh, Mr H, what are you reaching for there? Mille. Uh, we got excited when we saw these. Yes. Uh, this, rather. It's very good. It's a pen and ink drawing. And Mille, we did some research. We did what we don't have never done previously, in fact. We rang an auction house just before we started speaking about this because we recognise the name Mille, and it's, it's a good name, and it's normally quite desirable. An original... Uh, pen and ink drawing, you'd be looking in the high hundreds, even into the low thousands. Ooh, wow. However, they told me that there were a number, a very considerable number of reproductions, so that the, on the yeah. law of averages, this is probably a reproduction. It would need to be looked at by them. We're going to have to judge it as a reproduction. If we're wrong, I'm sure you'll be invited back another Thank time. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, Thank you are. <laughs> so we're saying around £12 for this. About £12 pounds is fair, I think, Paul. And I think that went with it, guys, didn't it, when yeah. you bought it did, them? Yes. Yeah. Again, a nice historical item, Paul, isn't it, really? The frame's nice. I like frame's, that. Frame's it's a bit battered. It's a bit battered, but yeah. lovely frame. 
and uh, an item of some historic interest because it says here oh, Victoria. Victoria Princess of Prussia, Prussia and it was presented to somebody by her in 1890. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So it's a really nice object, uh, uh, you know, it's a lovely quality item yeah. but it's seen, it's seen, better, been days. seen better days. So um, what do we reckon for that and that, Paul? Uh, I reckon around £30. What did you pay? £25. To pay. Well, 25 not well, five, good. guys, and yeah. you never know, you're in with the chance of the old £1,000 if we can authenticate that. <laughs> well, let's have a look at these two ladies. I've got to say here, guys, that I thought the casting was a little bit rough and ready here, not the greatest or crispest casting I've seen. But obviously you took a bit of a shine to them. Have you got a place in your home to put these? Well, I didn't say that exactly. No, no. oh well, they're going to end up somewhere. Sadly, Mr H, I'm not going to go over the top on these You two. don't like them, do you? I don't like them, no. Lorne, I've got to I say. I mean, How much I think did they cost you? They cost 23 for the pair. 23 so for the pair. That's a portion of the budget. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of money to spend on these, sadly, because they're very, very modern, although in an earlier mm -hmm. style, something of the Art Nouveau creeping in there, but sadly not period at all. So we're only thinking here of about three pounds each. Ooh, it's a ouch. bit of a loss. Mm. Let's try and make it up with who else but Action Man, Mr. H. Action Man and your other name. I <laughs> say. Uh, thank you. Of course. of course. Great collection here. This is from around 1967. Oh yeah. Supported by its original booklet, which is nice. Of course, had it had Very the original nice. box, would have been even better. It's virtually complete. Uh, the other two are from, well, one of them's from 1971, the other one might be from towards the end of the late 60s, and that too has its own booklet. It's a really nice collection. Action Man is a strong yeah, collection area. Yeah. it's a good area. market, isn't it? And yeah. uh, I think for these three, we're looking at a total valuation of about £45. How much Whoa. would you pay for them? 24 I think it's a very good buy. You made well. your money yeah. back. Well done. Amongst the blue team's other buyers was the Beatles' Let It Be album, which lost them £2.50. A wooden box made them a healthy profit of £7. And a Wedgwood Peter Rabbit plate made them a whopping 25p. Well, this is it, judgment time. So how did the Blues do, Mr H? Well, they did all right. They got into profit, £110. Good. Ooh. So how did the Yellows do, Mr O? Well, the sunny Yellows, you're just in front at £120, so you are the winners. Congratulations. Well done. Well, done. well the Yellow teams are the winners. They've brought the song back out again, which is good news. All that's left now is to find out, gentlemen, best Ooh. buy, worst buy. Best buy is this rather lovely little picture frame. Nice to find a good quality antique. Had a boot sale. Nice. Yeah. But what not so nice, Lord, is the worst buy. And guys, I'm sorry, it's another one of your ghastly metal <laughs> figures. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. But it just goes to show you can find all sorts, good and bad, at a boot sale. So until next time, we'll see you then. Bye! Bye.